right, good morning, you guys. Uh, afternoon or evening, but here in California, where I am, it's Saturday morning. Awesome time to do a live broadcast with you guys. And welcome from Stephen in San Lorenzo. And I'm sorry I can't pronounce your name, but I'm going to mess it up. But thank you for joining us from London. That's two different parts of the world. Well, listen, you guys. I had an amazing week. I went out on a shoot, an assignment. Thank goodness we can get out into the world a little bit, although it is pretty strange. I got to admit, traveling on an airplane is not my favorite activity. Let me show you what happened on our way back. So um, flying back into Monterey Airport, we flew over one of the fires. This is the Big Sur fire. It's kind of sad. I mean, it's burning way high on this uh, ridge top. Really hard for firefighters to get in there. Um, what happened was actually we were we were uh, not able to land because not just the smoke but the fog. We were diverted to the San Jose Airport, which is about seventy eight miles north. So we were going to come in at seven thirty at night. And naturally, that kind of changed that whole thing. This is the world we're living in right now. Thank you, firefighters. Thank you, guys who are out there, the first responders who are, you know, keeping everything going while we're in this crazy time period. All right. Well, listen, let's get this party started. Uh, first of all, just want to make sure you know... This episode is brought to you by our friends at Bay Photo. Now, here's some of their specials, 20% off. I've never gotten a wooden print, but it would be interesting to try this. Look at the different things that you can print on wood. Canvas wraps, these are pretty cool. I have used these, 25% off. The exposer is what's behind me right here. This is an exposer. They're really cool because you can actually change the, you can see you can change the canvas here once you have them hung and they just kind of float on your wall. They're pretty awesome. You can also get 25% off on your first order here. So listen, get something printed, you guys. Support Bay Photos, support yourself. That's what it's all about. We're going to be talking about this in the 10 Hacks. Well, listen, if you don't know who I am, I'm Mark Silver. I'm a photographer and an author in Carmel, California. Let's dive in. What is a hack? So first of all, this is from the Oxford Dictionary. This is, you know, these guys are pretty up to date on terms. It's a strategy or technique for managing one's time or activities more efficiently. Managing your time or your activities. So your activity as a photographer, making it more efficient. Okay. Number 10, let's just start in here. Plan your work. Okay, so you shot plans, um, even diagrams. Make a blueprint of what you want to photograph. Make a dream shot list for your whole life, like a bucket list. But whatever it is, plan it. Now, here's an example. I'm going to just show you uh, one example of a, not this one, but let's go down. Here we go. So this is, um, this is a, a commercial photographer I filmed some years ago, Sam Musilic, and he drew a diagram of what he wanted in his video. And the video was over here. Let's just pop that up here. Hang on a second. I got to get back to that page. So the video was this one. If you haven't seen it, this was a, an advertisement he was shooting for Gucci. She was going to wear, and you'll see it in the video, she's wearing sunglasses in this tank. So he drew the diagram of how he wanted her in the tank, where the lights were going to be, all that sort of thing. And even the lipstick she was wearing, it says red lips, you know, blonde girl. He didn't know who it was going to be because they sent over a model. But anyway, here he is, Stan Musilic. I mean, that's kind of an extreme example, but you should be planning out your work. Don't just randomly go out and photograph this or that. that. Put some thought into it. Plan it. Okay, that's number 10. Number nine, once you have your plan, you know what the next part of that sentence is? Work your plan. 
you got to get out and work. You gotta, it's Even though we're talking about doing things more easily and efficiently, photography, I'm not saying work has to be hard, but work could be fun. You know, you could be building something and enjoying it while you're sweating and, you know, moving your muscles around. Photography is work. And you've heard from so many of our pro photographers that we've had on the show. It's like, get ready to work, you know, get up early, stay up late, schlep equipment around with you. You know, it's work. But if you have a plan and you don't put it to work, nothing happens. OK, so that's number nine. Uh, OK, we're going to talk a little bit about social media here. When you post something on social media, and this could apply also to putting something in a book or on a blog post or wherever you put it. Chris Burkhart gave this advice and he's got, um, you know, a pretty good place to stand on his advice because he's huge on Instagram. But he said, when you post a story, tell the story, tell how you felt, what was going on. Don't just go, well, you know, I got another sunset and isn't it so cool? And I feel really great because I shot it with this, whatever. Tell the story. What makes this photograph unique? What was interesting about it? What caught your eye? Because you're going to hear the number one hack. I'm not going to tell you what it is because I'd skip ahead. The number one hack relates to this but tell your story in your uh, description. And I've noticed it really makes a big difference on the engagement that you get. Uh, you're, you're inviting people into your world and you're showing them what the photograph is, but you can also add to it with your words. Okay, so that's, that's hack number eight. Um, number seven, Bob Holmes has mentioned this over and over again. Ansel Adams brings it up often. Many photographers, all pro photographers, basically, at one point or another have mentioned this. And that is you've got to learn to see as your camera sees and every camera sees a little differently. You know, your iPhone, you notice this, right? You get out with an iPhone and you see this incredible whatever sunset and you take it and it just looks terrible. It's all pixelated and whatnot. You have a, a Sony A7R III, it looks really different. You, you know, you stop it down to F22, you get a very crisp sunburst. But you have to go through, if you haven't done this already, you've got to go through the testing period. And the way that you do that, there's several ways you can do that. But, you know, the easiest thing is go take a shot, really look at it with your own eyes, what you're seeing, photograph it, Bring it in, put it on your computer, and do a comparison until you really know, okay, what does this camera see? How does it see? Now, there's other things you can do. You can do test colors and compare those. You can put them out there, photograph them, and, you know, again, you can look at it with your own eye and see what you're seeing. Come back and look at it on the screen. But however you do that testing, Put the time in to make that happen. Get to know your camera so well that you can visualize what that camera is going to tell you. A later hack here is visualization. Now, one of the reasons that Ansel Adams made such a huge point of visualization is that he was shooting film 8x10 often. And if you didn't visualize what that was going to look like, you're, you're wasting a huge sheet of film. You're going to have to develop it. It's not like you have a bunch of pixels that you can just delete. So you had, you had to visualize, but it's equally true in our digital world. Why take a photograph that you haven't visualized? Why not get to know what your camera is going to see and capture it? Okay. You know, uh, chime in anytime you guys want. I'm going to pick up your hacks here in a minute. Okay, number six. This is so important because what is photography about? It's about light. What is photograph? What is a photograph? What is photography? Photo, light, graphy, writing. You're writing with light. So you've got to learn to recognize light and see it instantly. One way you can do that, Bambi Cantrell gave this piece of advice, you walk into a room, put your hand out. 
Now I can see the reflection of this light. I have a LED light over here and I can see that it's reflecting off of that. But if I turn my hand around in the room, you know, there's a little bit of a kick light coming from over here. I have a, a, a screen which is acting like a diffuser. So you can see, this is a good little trick. Walk into the room and turn your hand and see where the light is coming from or the, whatever space you're in. But always, 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 no matter what you're doing, whether you have a camera or not, tune in to the light. Where's the best light? Is it coming down straight? It's really harsh. Move your subject, you know? Is it beautiful golden hour, you know, and reflecting and warm and softening somebody's skin or whatever? This is, you know, look at that light all the time. Pay attention to it. Okay, know your tools of composition. I wrote a book about it. Why? Because I discovered, I got a lot of questions about composition. This came up even in our recent survey. It was one of the things you guys noted that you were struggling with. Well, you shouldn't struggle with it anymore because the book I wrote gives you 83 composition tools. We'll call them tools or I call them recipes. Now, it's not like you're gonna go out and you're gonna use every 83 of them every single day. But if you have them in your mind, if you like, hey, this is a leading line. You know, I can see my eye is being drawn to this point because I'm following a road or you see an S curve or you see diagonals and you go, you know, diagonals add a lot of vibrancy. They add uh, vitality. They add motion. Whereas a horizontal line says just the opposite. It's things are chilling out. So if you know these tools, it's sort of like, I use the analogy of having a vocabulary. Now, if you have a vocabulary of three to five words, which I'm sorry to say, I think most photographers are in about that range. Let's see, I can shoot it this way. I could shoot it that way. Um, I'm running out of ideas, guys. <laughs> you know, So this is not necessarily you, but you could even test yourself. I should make a quiz like what is your composition vocabulary? Do you know 10 compositional forms? Well, 10, 10 words. How many sentences can you make? If you know 83, you can put together a lot of sentences. So that is absolutely necessary to have in your toolkit. Know your composition. If you don't have my book on it, Secrets from uh, the Masters about composition, you should grab it because I wrote it for that reason. So you'd have a handbook that you could carry around with you. Okay, telling your stories and what that's what composition is all about. And that's what photography is all about. It's the repeated theme throughout all these hacks is the better you're able to tell a story, the more you're con conveying to your viewer what you saw and felt which is really what it's all about, right? Okay, one of my favorite points, I've brought it up a lot, our guests have brought it up, and that is know the masters, get to know the masters. Now, here's, here's a master, this guy's amazing, Arnold Newman. He is the guy that really, uh, he didn't coin the term and he doesn't necessarily like it, he mentioned, but uh, he had this hung on him, which is doing environmental portraits. What's an environmental portrait? You're taking a picture or making a picture of somebody in their actual environment. Now, this is a photograph that I dearly love. This is Igor Stravinsky, the composer and conductor. Oh, I got to move that. Okay, sorry, guys. Now, look at this. It breaks all the rules of composition. Is this the rule of thirds? Absolutely not. What rule? Anyway, there's no rule. And look at all the negative space that he has. And Igor is like this tiny guy kind of over in the corner. And the lid of his piano has got most of the real estate here. But doesn't it just tell you this amazing story? Look at this. Look at this photograph. It tells you like, here's this conductor. This is what he does. It's absolutely clean. There's nothing on the piano. There's no distractions. There's just the lid of the piano. There's the composer who's looking straight at you. Amazing. Look at these guys' work. Not to copy. Don't get hung up in 
the idea that we're going to copy anybody because you can't. You couldn't copy him if you tried. I couldn't. But it gives you an idea. Next time you go to take a, fort, a portrait of somebody, you know, don't just think of that in, in terms of I'm shooting them straight on, you know, or I'm going to move you know, them over here, the rule of thirds or whatever. Put them anywhere you want in the frame and put whatever else you want in the frame too along with it because you're, again, you're telling that story about them. One of my other favorite books, this is Museum of Modern Art in New York. And it's, by the way, I like looking, if I can't go to a museum, I like looking at books from museums. This is a phenomenal book because it, it goes over their history of art and it's not all photographs. This happens to be one of my favorite photographers of all time. Let me get in here. There we go. Henry Cartier-Bresson. Let's get this more in focus. This is just an amazing image. And I hope this is in focus. There we go. But don't just look at the photographs. There's all kinds of other art in here, from sculpture to paintings. And I, I'll tell you what I do. In my evenings, I sit out on my porch and look at these photographs. Look at these printed, uh, paintings, whatever the whatever the form of art is, and I can just feel the inspiration bubbling up in me. And it's a recharging process because we've all got to keep looking for new stuff, right? You want to keep getting energized. And I never buy, I do not buy the philosophical point that everything has already been created and it's all out there. That's BS. You have your own vision, but your vision, just like mine, is influenced by what you see around you. And you might see a, a piece of sculpture from Picasso and go, whoa, I wrote about this in, uh, in Create, how Picasso could see art all around him. There's a series of photographs from an amazing photographer, David Douglas Duncan, who spent years with Picasso. I think he shot. 25,000 images. Now that's with film of just Picasso. He spent that much time with them. And there's this one series where Picasso is eating dinner and he, he's eating a, a fish, you know, and it's got the skeleton. And you can see there's a little spark. He goes into his studio after the dinner. He makes a, a fillet out of clay, presses the skeleton in there. He makes two of them puts them on a plate, paints them, fires them in, a, in his kiln, and he's made this piece of art from something that you and I would throw away and try to get out of the house before it stank up the whole house. He saw this as art, and he made a point out of you see art around you all the time. And as photographers, that's our job, is to find that art and communicate it to others. Okay. So we're up to number three. You'll hear this one every time I go on my broadcast. Get out and capture your own images of life. Somebody actually left a really, I, I love the comment about, you know, those were well-chosen words, you guys. I chose this little phrase to end with, I don't know, over a decade ago. And uh, I kind of morphed it, you know, from the news guy that I think I told you about if you were on my news show. If you don't like the news, go out and make some of your own. I thought, you know, you don't like the way the world is. You don't like how it looks. Well, make some images of your own. And sometimes, you know, it's like we can forget. We've got to get out every day and capture our own images of life, our own images. Again, you can stockpile this creativity in your head. You can look at YouTube videos, you can read books, you can learn stuff from, you know, the masters, you can do testing with your camera. But at the end of the day, listen, Michael Jordan, the world's most amazing, probably top <laughs> basketball player, I mean, arguably in the top five, I'd say probably number one. You know, what was he all about? He wanted to play basketball and win. So all the practicing, all the stuff that he had to do off the court that he wasn't really happy with, all this, all that, it was all because he wanted to play basketball and he wanted to win. 
So take that to heart. Capture your own images of life daily. Okay, we're up to number two of our list here, and I'm going to show you my uh, illustration here, not of these, not of Stan. We've got that. Okay, I wrote about this in my book, Advancing Your Photography. You may have glossed over this and said, yeah, yeah, Mark, that's pretty cool. Listen, you guys, I'm going to brag here. This little illustration was distilled out of over a thousand hours of interviews with all sorts of different photographers, some living and some not. I mean, I didn't interview Ansel myself, but I had the privilege of interviewing his son and using unreleased footage of Ansel Adams. Same thing with Edward Weston. I, you know, I was able to follow Annie Leibowitz around and talk with her, Chase Jarvis, you name it, all these people. And out of this, I realized there was something missing. There was a cycle that goes on with photography. And where was this written? Who had put it into any kind of form? Nobody. So I thought, okay, I'm going to figure this thing out. It took me a couple of years, actually, maybe about five years. And I first thought there were only four parts to it. But then as I kind of drew this thing out, I realized, wait a minute, there are five parts. First is visualization. I'm not going to beat this to death, but you have to visualize. And this goes back to my number one point of getting a plan. That's your vision. Actually, you know, it resonates with every one of these things I said. Okay, so see as your camera sees, you got to visualize. You got to know what your camera's seeing. You got to know your tools of composition. You visualize, wow, if I, you know, if I captured this person in this, you know, setting, and if I move them over here, it's going to be a way more interesting photograph. That's visualization. Okay, once you visualize, that actually carries through the entire process. Then you've got to know your equipment, and we've already covered that. You got to know what your camera sees. Then you capture. What's capturing? Capturing is light and composition. Really, that's all there is to it. It's like you've got to know when to press the shutter, but that's based on your knowledge of light and composition. Then you process your image. Okay, so I, I process a lot of images as black and whites, and if you saw our episode with Doton Sagai, you know, we both use um, Silver Effects Pro from DxO. I think it's absolutely the best um, processing for black and white images. It gives you the most control. It's even got Ansel Adams' zone system built into it. The more I learn about it, the more I really love that software. So the point is, I might have visualized this as a black and white, but I need to then process it so it really pops. There's a real uh, dynamic range to it. And I might do a lot of different things to it, and you can do it with inside that software. Then you got to share it. You got to get your work out to the world. If you don't do that, it would be kind of like you're making a meal, but nobody gets to eat it. You know, I knew this kid who was a fabulous guitar player but he never played for anybody else. He played in his room. Nobody knew, got to know how good he was. So you compare that with Jimi Hendrix who played, unfortunately, only 27 years of his life, but he played every moment he could. Basically, he carried his guitar around with him and whatever kind of gig he could get into, this is before he hit it big, he would just show up with his guitar and start playing and blow everybody away. Share your work. And remember, sharing doesn't just mean social media. It means putting it on your wall. It means putting it into books. It means putting it on, you know, holiday cards. Get your work out there. Share your work. That's the cycle of photography. Know it and use it. Okay. We're up to number one. What do you guys think it is? Is it some piece of equipment? How, how many equipment hacks have I given you here? One. Is it, is it some new camera? Is it some like cool trick? I don't personally like tricky stuff, you know, like, oh, wow, that was a tricky photograph. It, it's not to me. I mean, I'm not going to knock people who, you know, whatever. But to me, 
I kind of come from the classical school, and again, I'm I'm sort of like grounded in in art as as you know, really, where did ph photography come from? It grew out of classical art. Okay, the number one hack is one word. What do you think it is? One word. Communication. I'm going to let that resonate. I'm going to talk about this more than all the other ones. Communication. It is defined in the Oxford Dictionary as the successful conveying or sharing of ideas and feelings. The successful conveying or sharing of ideas and feelings. Photography is a communication tool. Photo, again, means light. Graphy is writing. We're writing with light. Now, if we were writing with a pen, you'd absolutely know you're communicating to somebody. You write them a note. I love you. That's a, that's a communication. I, I feel bad today. That's a communication. Um, I'm really blown away by what I'm seeing. That's a communication. This is a written form of communication. When, when we're communicating as photographers, we're trying to, the great photographer, Alfred Stieglitz, who you may not know who he is, but he was the one that really probably more than anyone he was a mentor to Ansel Adams, first of all, but he was responsible for bringing photography from purely a documentary pictorial form, you know, like you could do an engraving, and it was an exact replica of what was out there. He was the one that really introduced photography as an art form, and we really can thank him uh, because there was a long time, you guys, where photography was not considered an art form, and it wasn't necessarily used as an art form. It was a recording device. Here are the trees. Here's a train. Here's a woman. You know, it was very plain. It was just recording what was out there. And he was responsible for bringing it into an art form that we appreciate today. And he said, what you're trying to convey in your photograph is an equivalent, he used this word equivalent, of what you saw and what you felt. Why does he use equivalent? Because it's not an exact reproduction of obviously what you saw and felt. You're back here somewhere, you know, and you're looking at this huge scene and your camera is a rectangle or a square and you're taking out of that whole scene, you're taking one really fairly, fairly small part, you know, of that, and it's equivalent. So again, you might process it as a black and white. That's, you didn't see it as a black and white, but you saw something and you're communicating that feeling. Okay, now there's so many layers to communication. I really should do a whole show on this. You've got to, one, be communicating with your environment, and this question comes up, you know, with people on street photography. Do you go up to people and tell them you won't, or ask them if you can take their photograph or not? Is there some rule to this? Uh, or do you do what Henry Cartier-Bresson did where he just kind of was so stealthy, he just captured the photograph before anybody knew he was there? But if you look at it, many of his photographs, that's not even possible. He had to make his presence known. And I think the answer is you're only going to know that if you're in communication with your environment. And that's really important. Do I need to introduce myself? Sometimes you definitely do. Uh, Deanne Fitzmaurice mentioned, you know, this photograph she took in uh, Cuba where there are these guys that were kind of looking at her a little bit like, who is this chick, you know? And she just made eye contact with him, you know, and communicated that she's taking a photograph and they, they chilled. So it could be as simple as that. That's a form of communication. Hey, I'm okay if I take your photograph. You could do it without saying a word, right? But the point is you are in communication with your environment. A camera is a means of communication, but you have so many other means of communicating besides that, your facial expression. Ed Kashi talked about, you know, become involved with your subject. Don't just rush in grab a photo and rush out. You know, you're there with people. And that's really the key point here of communication. 
Who are we photographing and who are we showing our photographs to? People, other people, even if it's one other person. There's a person at the other end of this viewing it, and that's who you're conveying who you, how you felt. So always remember that. And communication with your camera, we talked about that. Communication with the art form itself. Like, again, how could you make this a creative photograph rather than just a reproduction? Vincent LaFerre said something really cool. You know, he, he talked about bending the rules and getting, you know, how he could kind of do these ninja Jedi moves and get into concerts and get past the, you know, the gatekeepers and the guards and all that. But there was a little bit of communication that had to go on there to make that happen, to let those people feel comfortable enough with you to let you go by. That's another form of communication. Again, I could do a whole show on this one word, communication. The better communicator you are, the better you're going to be as a photographer. You got to communicate with your camera. You got to know what your camera sees. That's a form of communication with the people in your environment. With, uh, you know, actually it, it goes across the boards on the five stages of photography. Your visualization is a communication. Your own mind, seeing what's out there, knowing your equipment, capturing. You got to look at the light. You got to look at the composition, processing. What am I trying to communicate here? Do I want dark clouds in this or do I want it to be really bright? You know, I mean, that's you can do that with your processing. You change those things and then sharing. Well, you know what the derivation of the word communication is very interesting. It comes from the Latin shared. It also goes back to communicare, which um, has a means common. You're putting something out there that other people, you can share with others that they have in common and it sparks something. There is a message there. Okay, you guys, those are my 10 points. If you've got any others you wanna pop in here, please do so. I hope this has helped you guys. We'll, you know, we'll publish this in a couple of different forms. I'll put it up as a, a shortened video. We'll probably trim it down a little bit. But also as a blog post, there's more than 10 hacks. I mean, there's an infinite number of hacks. I just picked these out kind of this list may change and I'll probably should do this over and over again. But one that will never change is communication. I think that has to be the number one hack. And if you if you ask yourself and this is something Chris Burkhart said before you press the shutter, what am I trying to say? What's the story here? How do I want to communicate this? What can I do that can make it unique? And Chase Jarvis talked about, what can you put a spin on so it's like stand it on its head, make it different than everybody else. Those are all ways of communicating. Okay, so listen, you guys, uh, breaking the rules. Yes, Jared, we... <laughs> um, well, I think, you know, in the case of Arnold Newman, he just didn't agree to those rules to begin with. So he, he never thought a lot. Many, many fabulous photographers just didn't buy into those rules ever. I don't know if I ever did. And I think it's there's something that you've got to have a framework or, as I say, tools of composition. But they're they're not rigid laws. There's not a rule of thirds. There's not a rule of an S curve or, a, you know, rule of diagonals. These are tools, just like in cooking, you have recipes, you know, there's no rule that says you have to bake biscuits just this way. You know, there's ways that you can change that. You could put cinnamon topping on your biscuits. You could, you could add honey, you could put cheese inside. I mean, you know, there's how many variations could you add to a common recipe for biscuits, for instance. So, Jared, yes, simplicity, absolutely. I am a really simple photographer. I do not carry a lot of equipment with me. Listen, on this assignment, I, I carried one think tank bag this big with two cameras in it. Uh, I rented lights. Um, my other uh, cinematographer brought you know, his tripod. I carried a tripod. It was what I could carry on the plane. 
complete recording setup. Du dual cameras, uh, you know, Zoom 5 recorder, microphones, lavaliers, everything in one kit. And the more variables you have, remember this, the more variables you add to all these 10 points, the more chance of getting confused, getting your message muddied up. Keep it simple. Communication is a very simple tool. <laughs> but like any tool, you got to know it. You got to work with it. Okay. Listen, you guys, thanks for joining me. Hey, if I haven't asked you yet, will you please subscribe? A couple of announcements. Uh, we did a survey, which is still ongoing. It's the AYP Ambassador Program. And we have, that's not our ambassador. Hang on a second. I didn't invite her into the ambassador program. Here it is. Okay, I created a page. I'm going to send it to the guys who um, answered the survey. I want to invite you to be an AYP ambassador. Do more than belong, participate. Do more than care, help. Do more than believe, practice. Do more than dream, work. I consider AYP bigger than all of us. This isn't Mark Silber advancing your photography. It's advancing your photography as a communication means internationally that can involve all of us. And I believe the power of photography is it transcends language, customs, um, geography, race, gender. It transcends all those things because it's a communication that can instantly go out to another person and it literally can change their life. I bet you could name 10 photographs that you have, it's changed the way you look at the world. And if you can't, you should find those. But um, my vision is uh, for the AYP community is that we are an international community connected with each other with the common purpose of being creative and advancing our photography to the next level. I'm going to add this right now, this link right here to the chat. And I'd like you guys to uh, plug into it. Please shoot me an email and tell me how you want to participate. If you do, you don't have to. Nobody has to participate in this. But if you do, let me know what it is. Um, we're going to we're going to roll out some cool things. Uh, I'm going to I think next week I am going to start giving away my book, Advancing Your Photography. You just got to pay for the postage, but I'll send you the book. That's going to start, I hope, next week. I'm sort of putting that program together. I want to get that book out. I want it into your hands. That's kind of cool. You may know friends that want a copy of the book. Tell them to get it. It's free, but you got to pay postage and handling. I can't quite cover that. But you're going to get the book. You're going to put it to use, and there's some other cool things that go along with it. So um, if you're not already in the AYP Club, please join. I want to start doing live broadcasts just into AYP Club. I believe we're going to start next Friday. I'll let you guys know. That's coming your way. Um, tell your friends, okay? Please bring your friends along to AYP, to these YouTube videos, to the AYP Club. Your word of mouth is what really makes a difference okay so if you haven't already subscribed please do so share the videos like them leave your comments that's really important i read your comments you see me reply to almost all of them sometimes i can't because i'm like last week i was out on assignment but i'm trying to catch up but if, if i have the opportunity believe me i always love reading your comments and will reply to them all right well, listen, you guys, you've got the whole weekend ahead of you. Look at those 10 points. Use them. Put them to work. Get out. Okay, let's say it together. Remember, this was, uh, this was point number three. So remember to get out and capture your own images of life. Love you guys. Stay well. Stay safe. Stay in touch. Take care.
<laughs> I surprise you guys. I noticed a bunch of you guys are still hanging around there. I was going to turn everything off. I turned off my other camera and I thought, well, hey, you guys are hanging out. I'm going to uh, chat with you for a minute. I've never done this before. This is kind of a new thing. So what the heck? <laughs> Steven, I, you know, I don't have Jared with me. He's driving across country, so I don't have him reading uh, my uh, comments from you guys. But Stephen, I often take only one lens with me to the zoo, different lenses on different days for different shots. That's pretty cool. I, I hadn't thought about that, but that, I, you know, I'm the same way. I mean, I am about to travel, do a road trip with this camera here. This is my Hasselblad and it's got an 80 millimeter lens. I don't own another one. Um, that's the only lens I got. So, you know, uh, it's a Good idea. Keep it friggin' simple. Okay. So, uh, listen, I don't see a lot of other questions here, but am I, uh, uh, yes, you can tell he was breaking it. Well, we already talked about that. Okay, you guys, I just couldn't help but think, well, you're hanging around. I'll hang around with you. We're going to, um, we want to implement something where we do kind of an after show separate little recording. I think we're going to plug that in. We got a lot of stuff in the works. This is why I need you guys to help me with the ambassador program. You know, we're a small team here and it, there's only so much. I try to work hard, but there's only so many things I can implement. If you can help me carry the load, that'd be really appreciated. Okay, guys, take care. See you again soon. <laughs>